Today we will talk about circular dependencies or cycles as they are often called. Cycles are a principal reason why large software is difficult to understand and hard to maintain. So let's take a look at cycle within Latex. What you see here is a project, a Java project which is organized by package structure. And right away at the top level, so at the top level you can see there are three packages. And if you look at the first package, it depends on the second one. And if you look at the second package, it depends on the first one. And that's an example of a cycle. And in fact, it's a bad cycle because it's a cycle at the very top level. So we'll sort of look at cycles and we'll look at it top down. We'll walk through our, we'll walk through our project structure and we'll look at cycles. So what do I do to look at cycles? The first thing I'm gonna do is to apply partitioning at this level. So I'll select and I apply partitioning. And notice how a box was created around ant.taskdefs and ant, the first two packages. Uh, and, and the cycle was highlighted. Well, we can go inside the next level. We can look inside this package. And we can go ahead and we can apply partitioning again. And it said, well, not everything is in a cycle. The first and the last ones are not in a cycle, but all the other ones inside in, are in a cycle. And in fact, by applying partitioning, it's also telling you which of the cycles, uh, which of the dependencies if you got rid of would eliminate cycles here. And in this particular case, we can see all the dependencies above the diagonal are the ones, uh, if you got rid of them, then this particular package uh, would, would be cycle free at the top level. And, and you can walk down this path of structure. Uh, you could look at the next level and you can apply the partitioning algorithm again. And again, you can see what, uh, which of my packages are in a cycle. Um, and in fact, Latix even gives you a way to recursively walk through the, the entire project uh, and partition that and apply, uh, and apply partitioning uh, and identify the cycles. So this is a visual way of looking at cycles. Um, and one of the nice things about this way is that it's also telling you which of the dependencies are good candidates for you to remove. Always when you apply the component partitioning, you'll see that the dependency numbers are larger below the diagonal than they are above the diagonal. And that's by, by design. And the primary reason why we do that is so that you can identify which dependencies are the, the ones to break in order to reduce or eliminate the cycles at that level. All right, so now we'll look at cycles using reports. So let's go to reports and we'll generate a cycles report and we'll, we'll select the cycles which will walk through the structures just the way we identify, we talked about and we'll produce a report. Notice that there are some other ways of identifying cycles as well. There is a low level cycles which actually forgets the top level structure and simply takes, in this Java case, takes all the classes and finds the cycles of the classes. And then finally, there is a low level cycle with members, which is only at the member level, the methods if there are cycles. Uh, but in any case, the first two are the most important ones. And first one in particular is the most important one because it identifies cycles at the high level, which means that we are unable to take a large pack project architecturally separate it up into architectural pieces and allow different people to work on it. So let's generate the cycles report. And there it is, we've generated a cycles report. And let's take a look at this report. Notice the cycle report has, the, has a package name in the left column, has a cycle group in the middle column, and then the name of the subsystem, which could be a package, which could be a class. Uh, in the third column. And the cycle group tells us which of these elements are in cycle. So that's the top level cycle it identified. It looked at ant task defs and ant being in a cycle and put them in group one. Then it went inside task defs and identified the packages which are in a cycle. Then it went to the next package and then identified it and then progressively walked through it and as you go further down you can see that it's identifying even the classes within a package if they are in a cycle. Uh, so as a result we now have a report 
which has all of these cycles identified for us. And finally, let me show you a trick that you can use uh, when you identify cycles uh, using partitioning and applying also tagging at the same time. So let's go to our DSM. Let's select the top level. The highest level is always dollar root. Let's go to tools and let's apply tag cycles there. So it's, it will walk through it. So it let, walked through the entire project and tagged them. And as you can see, if you were to go at the highest level even, you would see that it's tagged those two together. So that one and that one in the red. If you actually bring your cursor over it, it says high level cycle zero. And this one says high level cycle zero and they are together in one cycle. Now let's look at task defs. And if you look at the next one, it's got several of the, them in cycles. And if you bring a look at this, it's high level cycle one now. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, or, or at seven actually. And you can see that there are seven of them here. And you can progressively walk down and you can identify the cycle. And in fact, you can also look at those cycles right from here itself. Uh, you can see what those cycles are. So that's a low level cycle inside task defs in a package called optional which has a sub package called script and those two classes happen to be in a cycle. Most of the time that kind of low level cycle uh, doesn't bother us, doesn't have any impact on it on us. You can actually get the, you can actually see these cycles right in your browser itself if you set up continuous integration with Latix. So you can actually then go to Latix web and you'll see a report on every snapshot that you export to a project. So this is the latest snapshot for our end project. And again, you can see the report. You can see that the top two subsystems that we talked about, the top two packages in a cycle, then the next level of cycles and so on. And so you see all of the cycles here, right in Latix web in your browser. And finally, you can actually track how you're doing over time. So here is an example of, you can actually graph this. So here is a project. When it was version 1.1, when it started, only 8.8% of its classes were in a cycle. By the time we got to version 2.1, for almost 41% of the classes are now in a cycle. And this is an example of architectural erosion. This is what happens over time as things are needlessly coupled, as architectural boundaries are violated, it becomes harder to maintain and harder for others to understand.